my daily ninja. I do my, you know, yeah. I'm not as great at calls, but I'm doing my thank you cards and I'm like, trying to do my pot pies and I'm right. trying to do, um, you know, more yeah. real estate stuff. I just need to All right, you guys ready? You want to get going with it? Real estate yeah. person's yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Well, and so you're still doing other. Yeah. I'm a technology like, moron, yeah. so this might not work for a slideshow. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to yeah. I'm yeah. a bunch of networking. I get upset with that. I get posted that with events all the time. So I post like, quite a few like, women's groups. Do like you want this one close? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Please. All right. Has anybody here ever been to one of my classes before? No. Nobody? Yes. Okay, well, my classes come with a warning. Which ones? Oh. Why isn't this AC? I like how simple. I get some rebranding. I think I just finished my logo. Oh, did she? I'm just waiting on her. I like the blue. my business card. Yeah. Actually, it's okay. like Colby's design. Yeah. See me after class. You're grounded. Okay. Jump. Detention. I was like, okay. are you talking to me or? So nobody else been in my class? So normally my first slide is the parental advisory thing they put on rap albums. <laughs> okay, because I'm a Southside Chicago guy. I, got, I only got kind of one way it just works for me. So I try not to swear, but sometimes <coughs> I do. And sometimes it's necessary. So I'll do the best I can not to. But basically this is, my classes are, are I have three different classes I teach. And all of them are all predicated on none of the stuff you learned in real estate school. So this is all street knowledge, um, a no BS approach to real estate. I cut out all the fluff, and it's real straight, straight to the bone, as, as she can contest you. So, so with that said, I apologize before we even get started, because you guys are going to be like, what do you say? <laughs> and all the stuff that I'm going to tell you that, that we're going to cover today, I actually did. So it's not like I just made this stuff up. I actually did it. I have results from all of it. Um, but this is the this is the gist of what this class is all about. Um, so I don't know. I'm not going to ask anybody how old you are. But if you're older, you remember these Reader's Digest. Has anybody you've never seen this in your <laughs> life? <laughs> Uh, right? They have the best stories. Okay, them. so do you know that the <laughs> editors at Reader's Digest, when they came up with this, they want these in the bathroom. So every story in here should be long enough for the average person to use the restroom. Sitting down, number two. Okay, so, <laughs> so the articles are, are devised to last as long as the average person will sit. That's how long the articles are. So they're not real long. They're not like, you know... So I'm reading this one day because I'm older. I still get the newspaper. Anybody still get the newspaper? Once again. Mm -hmm. So I still read the newspaper. I came across this article in here and it's talking about unfreeze your brain. So I kind of took that and I went, God, what a perfect analogy for real estate because there's so many classes and there's so many people out there teaching, you know, um, you know whether it's uh, Tom Ferry or Who's the guy with the big chin, the big tall guy? Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Oh, so there's all these guys, these self-help and, and motivational speakers and all these guys out there, and they all have books, and they're all trying to sell something and, and all that. So I decided, well, I should come up with something that's, that's all about that stuff, only it's real-life, straightforward, no BS kind of stuff. So I read this article, and I came up with, with the gist of what this class is all about. So... So here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, raise your hand. Well, first of all, you ever go to a class and you think, who's this guy teaching this class and why should I listen to him or her? It's like, I've, I've sat through classes and there's 24-year-old kids in there going, I remember when I first started. I'm like, first started? Wait, I mean, you're 24. So you wonder, how much should I listen to what this guy's got to say? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to qualify myself for you. And if you don't think I'm qualified to be teaching this class, head out. I won't be offended. But I've got 30 plus years of, of owning my own business. I've seen a bunch. I've owned my own business for that long. I've worked for some other people. I've owned furniture factories. I've, I've done a lot of stuff. I've been in real estate for 18, 17 years. So I've, I've seen a few things. So I'm not, I'm not just some guy standing up here 
saying, oh, I did this and I did that. So raise your hand when I hit something that, when we have something in common. And I'm not prejudging anybody. So I'm Catholic, I love sports, okay? There's, okay, there's half the room. I'm a Navy veteran. I'm very, very proud of being a Navy veteran. I'm a business owner. Okay, everybody should raise their hand. I, all that. I lived in Chicago, California, Arizona, Colorado, and Texas. I've done business all over the United States. Um, I'm married. I'm a family man. I got kids. So lots, we all have something in common already. I'm not even through this. I coach. I'm a Republican. I'm proud of it. I spent 20 years in the furniture business. I spent four years as a loan officer. Two years as a title rep, I spent one year teaching realtors how to buy homes at auction and quickly realized that they were never going to do it and I was never going to make money because I only made money if they did. And the realtors just couldn't get through the fact that there was no title and no Pinsler and no, it wasn't successive. You know, buying houses at auction are, you see it, you buy it, you own it. It's a three day process. It's over and done. You know, as far as, as, far as inspection, if there's a doggy door, go ahead. Inspect it. But otherwise, <laughs> you know, I, I can tell you there were several times my eight year old kid went in through a doggy door and opened the door for me. Is it breaking and entering? Maybe, but I was always better at asking for forgiveness than permission anyway. So I have a master's degree from the school of Harvard and Ox. And then why do I do this class? I don't get paid. I don't have a team. I'm not recruiting anybody. I, my mentor program is completely shut down now. I'm not mentoring anybody. I've, I've shut everything down. I don't, it's just not for me. It's, I'm better being on my own because I can't find anybody that can work as hard as me. So I just don't gel with people as far as being their boss. I've, I've managed hundreds of salespeople, but the salespeople that I managed had a job. They didn't own their own company. They had to be there. So I had something over them. Like, I'm going to fire your ass if you don't show up to work or if you don't do this. You know, I always had, if you're, if you're managing or mentoring people, and they don't want to put the time in, you, you have no you have no leverage. So I'm done with it, because I'm just not good at it. I, I, I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. And, and when people don't care to work, I, you know, I can't help them. So everybody comes in, oh yeah, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And, and then three weeks in, they're like, well, I didn't know you wanted me to do an open house twice a week. Or really, you wanted me to go talk to people? Yeah, that's kind of how this works. So, so this is kind of an outline of how that works. Okay, so anybody here have a budget for marketing for the year? At the beginning of the year, we all have like a budget. I'm gonna spend this much money on marketing, Zillow leads, whatever it is, okay? We all have that where I can spend $20, I can spend $20,000, whatever that is. This is my entire marketing budget for 2019, and I'm probably gonna use it for 2020 as well, okay? This is it, this is my entire marketing budget, and the most important page in this entire thing is this page right here. And it says this on it, so you don't have to actually reach up here and read it. Hi. Hi, hello. How are you? And well, how are you? You're late, you have to do I'm laps so after class. I'm so sorry, all the movies. <laughs> you know you can't, you know that, I just found out yesterday, the kids can no longer do suicides at school. Everybody Why, know what because a suicide? of the word? Because of the oh, word. Oh, man. Because it's inciting kids to go. Just found that one out yesterday. Um, so this is my this is I this is my real estate business right here. It's all wrapped up into this quote right here. And that's what really this is all gonna be about. Okay? And my wife is probably so sick of me saying this, but I really I always try to put myself in other people's shoes. So you're never gonna have two clients that are the same, ever. And if you do, it's rare. So you gotta kind of you gotta kind of feel people out for who they are and how you should approach it or or you know, can I swear in front of this person? Should I talk about church in front of this person? Should I talk about drinking in front of this person? Uh, you know, should I avoid certain subjects? You know, you try to find as much as you can, find out as much as you can about the people you're about to work with, and then try to put yourself in their shoes. How would they be looking at what I'm showing them as far as houses? So if I've got somebody that's an engineer, my, my presentation's gonna be way different than if I'm working with uh, a baseball player. Okay, it's totally different. It's going to be much more analytical. I'm going to show them all my work. Let me show you how I, I looked up all these houses. Let me show you what parameters I put in so we're hitting all the right things because engineers are going to be like that. They're going to be looking. That's what I mean by this. Always try to put yourself in their shoes. And that's in everything. That's not just looking for homes or it's, it's in the entire transaction. So that's, that's extremely important. It's certainly very, very well. 
Um, you know, one of the things I didn't say on, on the thing about me, because I'm not a bragger kind of guy, but I do a lot of business here. I'm, I'm definitely a top producer here. I do, I do my share of business. Um, but I don't do it like anybody else. I don't have the Tom Ferry and the, the who, uh, I don't read the books. I don't, I just do what I feel works for me. So a lot of this is gonna be stuff that works for me. It may not work for you, but if it does, and I can ever help you get through any of this stuff, some of this stuff you might look at and go, God, that's a really good idea, I should do that. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I'm not just some schmo standing up here because I did four deals last year, okay? All right. Frozen brain syndrome, we all have it. I don't care who you are, we all have it. Um, anybody ever seen the movie Doc Hollywood? With, uh, who's that guy that's got Parkinson's? Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox, great guy, I love that guy. Back to the Future, great movie, right? So, I'm watching that movie one time, and he's this, uh, if you haven't seen the movie, he's this guy, he's on his way to California to be a plastic surgeon and make huge money with all the movie stars and all that. And his car breaks down in this little hodunk town of like three, 400 people or whatever, and, uh, and they need a new doctor because their doctor that's been in the, in the town for 50, 100 years, is, he's old and he's retiring. So they try to convince him to stay there and be the town doctor. He's like, I'm not staying, my car's broken down. I'm only here until it gets fixed. So the whole movie's about trying to get him to stay to be the doctor. But one of the scenes in the movie is he's at the hospital one night and these people bring their kid in and he's thrown up and he's, you know, he's, he's kind of a mess. So he decides that this kid needs surgery. So they're ordering up a helicopter and they're gonna come down and fly this kid to the closest hospital. And then the old smart, doctor shows up in his bathrobe, he's probably half drunk, mm -hmm. and he's got a can of Coke in his in his robe pocket, and he looks at the kid and he goes, you been in your dad's chaw again? And he goes, yeah, well, the kid had an upset stomach, so he gave him the Coke, kid throws up, he's fine. <laughs> so so here's a brand new doctor that's looking at, it's just that the story makes sense. Here's this brand new doctor, he's like, we're gonna operate on this kid. So kind of the same thing with business, If you, you gotta look at it that way. So, what do they call the guy that finishes first in his class at medical school? Last in his class. What, what do they call the guy that finishes first? Doctor. Doctor. What do they call the guy that finishes <laughs> last in his class? Doctor. <laughs> Same thing. Right? <laughs> Same thing. So, you know, I, for those of you that don't know me, I, I'm dealing with some stuff with my wife right now, and I don't let her go to any doctor without me because I don't, I don't care what it says after your name. There's nobody on this earth that has a card that says G-O-D after their name, mm -hmm. okay? And some doctors think they are. So you gotta kind of, I'm, I'm weird about that. My wife's dealing with some really serious stuff, so it's, it's really serious for me. So I look, at, I look at that as kind of, you know, how good of a realtor are you? you know, so it says after your name on your card that you're a licensed realtor. You're a member of PAR or SAR or Weimar or, or SEVAR or whatever, you're, you're a licensed realtor. I got news for you. There's good realtors and bad realtors. Okay, I had, I lost 10 deals. Two years ago, I lost 10 deals in 40 days. And it was all these idiots. I was like a magnet to every moron in Maricopa County that got a real estate license. It was like I was a magnet to it. And then I realized after that, because it sucked. I mean, it was a lot of business. It's not their fault, it's mine. It's my fault. Every one of those deals fell out because of me. Something they did, but it's my fault for not recognizing it and saying, hey, can I help you with this? Or calling their broker and saying, hey, I think maybe he might need some help or she might need some help. Or, you know, if they get pissed off, who cares? You're taking money out of my pocket. If this deal doesn't get closed, I don't care if I hurt your feelings. I really, really don't. I have a wife and two kids at home. I got a kid in college. I got, you know, so I got bills to pay. So that was a real eye opener for me, you know, as far as putting your putting yourself in other people's shoes, take control of the situation. Okay, <laughs> the other thing is now, so these new doctors, if you're gonna have a, a medical procedure um, and, and take yourselves or your kids, do you have kids? you have kids? Okay, so, so one of your children is getting ready to have some kind of medical procedure. Um, and you got a choice of going with this doctor that's done this procedure 400 times or this doctor that got out of medical school six months ago and has been practicing medicine for six months. Who are you going to choose? 
The guy, this guy? Everybody agreed? The guy that's done it 400 times? Okay, so I'm going to challenge you to say maybe that's not the right decision. And here's why. So the doctor that's done it 400 times, when did he leave medical school? 20 years ago? So this doctor that left medical, medical school six months ago, maybe he knows better technology. Maybe he knows a better way to do this operation. So you gotta kind of weigh it up. That's what I'm talking about, about unfreezing your brain. Everybody in the room probably said the guy that did it 400 times, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Start, just kind of, kind of look at things from a different angle. Maybe this new doctor, they're teaching better ways to do this stuff now. My wife is a perfect example. She's getting ready to have open heart surgery. Okay, I got a doctor at the Mayo in, in Rochester. He's been doing it forever. Guess what? He's partnering with a guy that got out of medical school two years ago. I like that. I want them talking together because there's new things that happen. That's what this is all about. The whole unfreeze your brain because every one of us would have gone with the guy that did it 400 times, right? That's kind of what I'm talking about. Same thing happens with real estate, okay? You got to open your mind up to different stuff. Engineers and architects. Um, same thing. I'm, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but newer architects, newer engineers, newer technology, okay? Um, who can I pick up? Nobody in here is as old as me. They didn't even have cell phones when I started in business. It was, it was different, you know? I'll fax you. And it was actually beep, and the thing <laughs> came up and rolled up, and you couldn't read. That's, when I started doing business, that's how it was. Everything's changing. Lawyers, how can you, how can you try this case this way? This, this, this time, maybe you want to stick with somebody with a little more experience, because this is a little bit different. But still, maybe, maybe they change the courses. Maybe they're doing stuff a little bit differently. Everybody get my point on that? All right. So, the first step of unfreezing your brain is you gotta think outside the box. Okay, so tomorrow morning, if, uh, if you put on, who can I pick up? All right, if you put on your perfume tomorrow morning and you like your perfume, you obviously do if you wear it every day, right? Anybody in here wear the same cologne or perfume every day? All of us, right? Try something different for a change. Or don't wear any. Or or just, I mean, it's a little things like that. Just start getting out of the box. Get in the habit of every day, just changing the habit. If you work at Starbucks and you go to the same Starbucks every day, try a different Starbucks just to change it up. Because these changes will be hard, especially if you're successful. It's really hard to make changes when you're successful. If you make changes when you're successful, you can be more successful. You already have the right formula to be successful. Maybe you can make it better. That's what I'm trying to say. Unleash your imagination, open your mind, look at a different reality, surprise yourself and don't quit. Okay, try to make a change every single day. Um, so anybody here have, who, who, who here works at home, has a home office? That's not like, like a, that's actually an office. Do you have an office no. at home? No, just work Do you have an office at home? When's the last time you changed it? I'm in the midst of doing it now. Great. Absolutely. Awesome. How many people do you think change their home office once they get it set up? Never. They never do it. Because they set it up the way they want it to look the first time, right? It's looking out the window. I got, you know, my booze over here. I got <laughs> my work over, you know. Try changing it up. Get out of get out of that comfort zone a little bit. Change things up a little bit. All right. This is probably the best one of all. Um, so, so as a a professed Republican, um, I have uh, two nieces that are gay and are not Republican. Um, so, and I love them with all my heart. I love my nieces. So every time I see them, I try to have a conversation about how they feel about us. I'm not getting political. I promise you I will not get political. <laughs> but I open up my mind to, to say, why do you feel that way? What, what do you feel is being done to the gay community that would make it better for this? Or what is, you know, kind of stuff like that. Open your mind up. Let, let people tell you something different. Even if you don't agree with them, listen to it. Because there might be part of it that might make sense to you. Okay? Um, and I'm old school, you know? I mean, I'm like Rush Limbaugh and I could hang out. I'm, I'm <laughs> way, I'm way right, okay? But then all of a sudden I got a gay niece. I don't love her any less, I still love her. I mean, it's not, nothing changes, that's family. So I had to open up my mind and, and I had to not say certain things at family functions and, 
you know, respect the fact that she she feels different than I do. It's it's crazy, but you'd be surprised how set in your ways you are until you actually try to try to change it. All this is going to come around to real estate, I promise you. So I'm not just being like a priest up here. All right, um, that makes sense, right? Look as if you've never seen. Change your environment. I can't tell you how important this is to to change your thought process. Um, if you, who here drives to, goes to, I go, I come to this office every day. I work out of this office. I come here every day. Anybody else go to a certain place every day to work? You do? Yeah. Do you go to an yeah. office? What, what do you, an office. You yeah. go to an office. Okay. Do you drive the same way every day? And the same way home every day? 99% yeah, time? Yeah, 99% of the time. Change it up. And then, and then, but be very aware of what's around you. And you will be amazed at how your brain picks up on stuff that you're like, well, shit, I just realized I don't even think when I drive to work. I just do it every day. And all of a sudden you go a different route and you're like, wow, that house is for sale. Oh, that's the same realtor that I saw over on that. All of a sudden you're just going to start picking stuff up. So I challenge you, change things up. Just try it. Change things up. Drive to work a different way. If you work at Starbucks, go to a different Starbucks. If you don't want to go to a different Starbucks, drink something different tomorrow. Talk to somebody different. Um, try to find a subject that's foreign to you and try to learn from somebody today. Like, uh, like uh, I don't know anything, I do know a little bit. Ballet, I don't know much about ballet. So I would, I'll, sometimes I'll challenge myself to say, okay, this week I want to find somebody on Facebook somewhere and say, hey, what does it mean? Find a ballet term and find out what that term means. I'm just using ballet as an example. But find something that you can pick something up that you can teach yourself or learn that's different and see if that doesn't open up your brain to like, wow, I, that was kind of interesting. I, I had no idea that in ballet they, those guys work out like eight times a week and do squats and you know, you don't think of it that way. I was a hockey player. What do I know about ballet, right? Stuff like that. Just open your mind up to different stuff. Anybody that's living on negativity, I don't I don't hang around with a lot of people like that because I'm just not that way. I'm not very negative, so I don't attract a lot of negativity. Um, if you're attracting negativity, detract yourself from it. If you're around negative people, separate yourself from it because it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna actually glom on you. It is. It's contagious. It's horrible. But positivity is the same way. You know, um, for those of you that don't come around this office a lot, and I can tell you that she comes in here and she used to hang out downstairs and now she hangs out upstairs because it's, it's way more positive, it's fun. If we had an HR department, we'd all be in jail because it's just <laughs> wrong up there. I mean, but it's just fun. We have a lot of fun. Nobody beats anybody up, and right? I mean, it's just, and, it's and you positive. learn up there, you learn. Mm -hmm. We're all like, hey, I had a deal the other day and, and it's a good place to learn, so. Think about that too. Open it up a little bit. All right. Okay, so I got in trouble with this slide with Larry, who's not here. He's upstairs. <laughs> um, this is my opinion. <laughs> I can't tell you what it's about. <laughs> this is my opinion. Okay. So who in this room is going to do five or more deals this year? Everybody's going to do five or more deals. Okay. So the chances of you doing a deal with an idiot are <laughs> high. <laughs> Very high. One out of those five, you're probably going to get an idiot on the other side of it. Okay? God bless them. They got their license. They might be practicing real estate. They might be a soccer mom that does two deals a year, and I'm not picking on the girls. They might be a hockey coach that does two deals. Whatever. Okay? But I will tell you right now that if you will take this advice, and John Dyer teaches it too. If you've ever been in one of John Dyer's classes, he'll tell you the same thing, and I'm totally bought into it. If you haven't read the contract 50 times, you don't know the contract. So I have seven billboards in the Chicago area, okay? Move to Arizona. I do a ton of relocation business, okay? So the biggest difference for those people is that this is a non-judicial state, and Illinois is a judicial state. Therefore, there's an attorney involved in every single transaction in Illinois. Well, when they buy down here, there's no attorney. They're like, well, wait, there's no lawyer? Who, who's going to look at it? I go, I am. <laughs> what? You're not a lawyer? Exactly. 
Exactly. Title and the realtor act as the attorney in a real estate transaction. For those of you that have never been involved in a transaction that's non-judicial, that there's an attorney involved in, it's, it's a nightmare because they make money and they try to stretch out as long as they can. The more hours they put in, the more money they make. It's a whole nother angle of the real estate transaction that's completely jacked up. So here, if you're acting as their attorney, maybe you should probably know how many sections there are in the contract and what they say. And did you know that section eight in the contract is the most important and has the least amount of verbiage? Who can tell me what section eight is? Additional terms. How, much, how many words are there in it? Well, not unless 12? 12. 12. There's 12 okay. words in Section 8. That's where you get to decide what's going on in the deal. So knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. I can't say that enough. If you're writing the right things in Section 8, you're covering your ass and your client's ass. And you're kicking the ass of the idiot realtor. That's where you make your money. That's where you lock down every transaction and protect your client and yourself. Because you get to put the verbiage in there yourself. You don't have to be Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> you just gotta write what's good for your, your within reason, obviously, okay? I don't write contracts with a close of escrow date that doesn't go down to the additional comments, additional verbiage, and it doesn't say COE to be on or before such date. Why do I do that? Protects my client. So if we can close early, no problem. We don't need an addendum. We don't need anything. It says right in the contract, on or before. Okay? Save yourself some work. Um, if, uh, if your client's lock is going to expire, okay? So your client's going to contract. The lender, hopefully you're, you're with a good lender, they get this thing locked on. If we can do this before this day, it'd be much better for them. They could, we, could, we want to extend the lock and that's gonna cost me money. It's gonna, yeah, no problem. We'll just write it for honor before. If it's vacant, write it for 30 days. Who cares? If you're closing 12, whoopee, everybody's happy. Nobody's gotta move out. Your clients can move in. Everything's covered. So just cover your ass. Put a little extra in it. Do that for your clients. Do that for yourself. Take the pressure off of it. Stuff like that. Does that make sense? So I truly believe this, um, and this is not because I read it in a magazine. Um, I, I actually lived through this. Um, 10 deals in 40 days. That sucked. It was, I was scared to come to the office every day. I was like, what's gonna fall out today? 10 deals in 40 days. Anybody ever have that happen? That sucks. Flat out. I bought the biggest bottle of Jameson they had at the end of that month. <laughs> I'm an Irish guy. Now I know you're from Chicago. What's that? <laughs> now I know you're from Chicago. Yeah. Jamo. Jamo. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to breeze really through this, guys, because you guys you guys know all this. Goals are, are totally important. We're going to talk about some goals here in a minute. And, and I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know. Um, everybody have a CRM? Anybody not have a CRM? I made it. Put your hand out like this. Facebook, Put your hand Instagram, out like this. CRM, and Google. <laughs> I don't Put pay your hand out like I don't pay for a CRM. Okay, so if you don't have a CRM, I, I'm a tech, no. I'm a technology oh, yeah. moron. So I'm an idiot. When you say I do have a CRM, I have <coughs> Google, but I don't pay for a CRM. There's free ones. Like, okay. Like yeah. what? So, so What's your here's what a CRM does for it. So mine's just like twenty bucks. Lines does is twenty dollars. It, it used to be really expensive. I well, guess I through have through NHG. Yeah, if you go through us, That's if you go through Lawyers Title, yeah. it's twenty dollars a month. Huh. I, I, it, it's the best twenty dollars you can spend on your business. Awesome. I don't care what else you're spending money on. Spend it on get Lines Desk. Okay. Kim Hickey or. I forget the new gal's name. The new gal. What's her name? Uh, her card's over there, but. but what if you don't? What if you? Don't use lawyers. lawyers it's okay, they'll still, they'll still do it through my home group. You're my home group agent? I am. As of today. Today? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, thanks. That's awesome. 
Are you with my homegirl? We're on the same team. She's the team lead, so. Oh, and awesome. I couldn't, I couldn't leave my previous brokerage until a couple of our deals were yeah, completed. Totally good. So, yeah, totally yeah good. a couple of my girls have been here for a couple of weeks, right? Awesome. And I just came over to so. so you guys do beauty contests normally and then do real estate, or is that how it's I mean, if you saw a team picture, people might think that. <laughs> <laughs> like that? <laughs> I'm, a married, I'm a married man. I'm just Thank you. Okay, so, so. Goals are important. Goals are important. CRM is vitally important. It's super important to me because when I started my business, they invented these little things called yellow sticky notes. Anybody ever seen them? That was my computer system. I was going to work and I would have a hundred of those things all over. And I would just, anybody know who Ray Rayner is? Chicago, Ray Rayner, the guy that had the, he would pull off the little things off and say, okay kids, let's watch Dudley do right cartoon. That was me. <laughs> Otherwise, I would forget everything. So I know where my weaknesses are. CRM changes everything. It helps you. It makes you stay accountable. That's why it's so good to me. And you don't ever get somebody that says, I haven't heard from you in two months. Or, I haven't heard from you in a month. Or, so it's, it's really important. Knowledge. Do you guys, do I have to separate you? <laughs> we're, we were encouraging each other to get lines. I went yes. to a Catholic school of nuns and priests. I, I will separate you if I have to, and then you have the to stay after thing. school. Yeah, that brought yeah. back old memories. Yeah. So one of my teachers was the water polo, water polo coach. He played at USC. He'd be up on the board, right? And all of a sudden, he'd take one of those erasers and back in it, pow, right off your head, and the chalk would go all over. That was back in Chicago. I went to an all-male private school, like Brophy. Yeah, I went, yeah. I went to St. Francis. Yeah. yeah, so you get it. You're yeah. allowed to do that. The nuns would beat the snot on you. Yep. <laughs> okay, knowledge is power, guys. I can't say it enough. Um, there's so many documents that you need to know. If you're working with a buyer, anybody in here, and don't lie, because I'm going to raise my hand too. Anybody in here ever work with a buyer without a buyer broker agreement? Anybody in here know why you have? You never did it? I, no, I haven't done a transaction yet. Oh. Don't do, <laughs> do not work with anybody without a buyer broker agreement. And if you don't know how to present it to them, if you're scared of it, they're gonna be twice as scared of it. I can tell you that as a fact, okay? And never, ever, ever assume that when you go on a listing presentation, I don't care if it's your mom, your brother, your sister, don't assume you're getting the listing. Everybody in the in the room that lost a seven hundred eighty thousand dollar listing because they assumed they had it raised their hand. Right here, I went in thinking, "Wow, this is mine." My accountant referred him. He's one of his clients. He said, "Yeah, just use Johnny." I went over there like, "Oh, I got this." Guess who didn't get that listing? Because I gave him a half-ass presentation. Whew, lesson learned. Great house too. Great house sold in two weeks. Oh, seven hundred eighty grand. Never assume. So the same thing is with buyers. Never assume that they're your friends. Okay, yeah. <laughs> because I'm your friend, because we're friends, that's why we're gonna do this. Let me show you why this buyer broker agreement is so important. Okay, you know, I have fiduciary duty to do whatever you tell me to do, you're the boss. That's what this, this whole document is about. You and I are in a business transaction now. This isn't, this isn't playing softball and drinking beers and this is business. Be the businessman, be the businesswoman, okay? Okay, um, you're a brand new agent? Yes. Do you have a lender partner? Yes, I do. Who is it? Oh no, not lender, uh, title. Who's your title partner? Chicago title. Okay, and, and who's the rep? Uh, Crystal Mold I just need her first name. Crystal. Crystal can be, she can make or break your business, but you gotta let her. Mm -hmm. And don't let her unless she knows what she's doing. So let me tell you, my title rep is Amanda, from lawyers, anybody know Amanda? That's because Amanda doesn't work with realtors anymore. She's now the vice president of teaching and technology, and I think they felt retired, that guy was retarded, and I needed more help. Sorry, I'm not supposed to use that word anymore. But, um, so Amanda, Amanda adopted me, and she is my boss, legit. Like when she teaches her classes, she's like, you don't need to be in this class, go back to work. <laughs> I go to, I'm like, she tells me what technology I need and what technology I don't. I asked her for the last time last week, I said, 
Amanda, am I supposed to be on this Insta pictures thing or this chat Insta snap pictures. chat or whatever it is? I mean, everybody's talking about chat snap and I'm not on it. She goes, you don't need it. Just do what you're doing. Make your phone calls, do your Facebook posts. Forget about that. Your audience is not on there. Stop. And if you ask me again, she's going to ground me or something. I don't know what she's going to do. Your title rep can be huge. Your lender can be huge. Huge. And there's some other vendors that you're going to develop that I'm going to show you here in a minute. Okay? Everybody here have a title partner? Do you guys have a title partner? Lending partner? Okay. If you don't, young man, what's your name? Cameron. Cameron, if you don't have a lending partner, talk. Are you an MHG agent? Yes, I Okay, talk to, there's, I mean, lip, uh, uh, VIP's in here, Guild is in here, and Lizzie Hofer is like, she's the Mac Daddy. She's, she's really good. Okay? So, you should get one. If I can help you with that, let me know. Okay, thank you. All right. Plan of attack. Everybody talks about pillars. I do Sphere, I do Open House, I do Zillow Leads, I do whatever it is. Whatever that is, put your plan on paper. And then just take a look at it. Do it in five words or less. And then take a look at it. So I have a napkin up on my office. And because sometimes I stick my foot in my mouth and I say stupid stuff, I have a napkin on my desk that says, a wise man once said nothing. Great quote for me. My wife gave it to me. Um, okay. Dedicate to a new plan. This stuff, anything you get out of this today, if it's, some of it makes sense, dedicate yourself to it. See if it helps. If it doesn't, go back to what you were doing. You're already doing something anyway. Okay? Okay, this is where I had to clean it up. This is my Chicago Southside upbringing. You've got to have guts. You gotta have a set. The guys know what I'm talking about. You gotta have a set to be in this business. You can't be a secret agent, okay? Anybody ever seen those shirts they have here for the top producers? It says Savage. So it says top producer, my home group, and it says Savage on it. So I got one of these shirts, the top producer shirts. And, and I'm not telling you that because I'm trying to brag. I'm just telling you I had the shirt on. I was getting gas the other day. I pull into gas. And I'm gassing up my car, and the guy, the pump, he doesn't see I have a magnet on the side of my car that says Johnny Walker. Now, I have something that no, not very few people have. I have a name that nobody forgets. <laughs> Everybody remembers Johnny Walker. And they're all red or blue, or, you know, I hear that every day. And it's great. <laughs> that's it's my name. And I have a standard joke. I said, oh, I asked my dad, is that what you were drinking the night he was born? And if that was true, your name would be Budweiser. I mean, it's a whole thing that I do with it. So, so he can't see that, but he goes, what's that shirt mean? And I said, oh, it's a shirt they give out where I, at the brokerage I work, I'm a realtor. And he goes, well, what's savage mean? I said, well, the guys that do a lot of business are they're kind of go-getters. You know, they got a lot of knowledge and they know what they're doing and so they awarded them with these shirts. He goes, great, can you call me? I want to list my house. My wife and I were talking about it last night and I knew I was going to meet somebody. Swear to God, that happened to me Saturday. That's awesome. Just because I had this shirt on. And it didn't even say realtor on it. He just wanted to know what the savage thing was. Because the savage is huge. And then a little tiny top producer thing over here with the My Home Group label. Okay? Who, does anybody here have a magnet on the side of your car? If not, why? Or something you could take off. If you don't want it on there all the time, take it off. You know, when my kid takes my car, I take it off. I don't want it. I don't want the people he's hanging out with seeing that. You know, but take my magnets off if you're going out, you know? So. Yeah, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, it's just free advertising. You're driving around, you know? Do it, and then if you do that, if anybody in here does that, I want you to call me the first time you watch somebody read the side of your car, because it'll happen that day. They'll just they'll be stopped at a stop button, and they'll just look over, and you'll see them reading it. They may not need a realtor. They might know somebody that might. They might need one. Who knows? You never know. But they sure as hell don't know you're a realtor if it doesn't say it on the side of your car, right? 100% of the time, they don't know if you don't have anything on there. They probably don't care, but what happens if they do? Why not have it, okay? I gotta tell you guys these stories about these billboards I have in Chicago. One of them, they found, <laughs> a whole bunch of bullet holes they found in it. I'll tell you about that one. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go back up. Let's go back up for one second. Just the, a set, courage, guts. I'm, you know what I'm talking about when I say you gotta have a set. You gotta have the balls to go out there and say, hey, this is what I'm gonna do to go get business. That's really what this whole thing is about, you know? Um, I can tell you, I had a girl that I was mentoring, and, and one of the reasons that I took her on, I said, 
come out to go have lunch, and we went and had lunch over at KO's, and we're sitting there having lunch. I said, do you know anybody in here? She goes, no, I don't know anybody. Said, go talk to somebody. I don't care who it is and tell them you're a realtor. And she jumped up and walked over two tables down and introduced herself. Just wanted to let you know I'm a realtor. You're not looking to buy a house or anything, right? Didn't turn out to be anything, but she had the boss to get up from the table and go do it. That's why I hired her. Because the stuff that I'm talking about doing, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to take some guts, okay? You got to have a no-lose attitude, but even more importantly, you got to have a I don't give a shit attitude. Because you haven't lost anything. If you go to talk to somebody and they say no, what have you lost? Nothing. You didn't know the person anyway, okay? As far as accountability partners, I, that's all like that Tom Ferry, Zig Ziglar stuff. Um, I believe in it, but to be honest with you, my accountability partner is my wife and kids. I look at them every day and that's what drives me. I mean, I, I, they, they have needs, I have needs, they have wants, we have wants, <laughs> we have needs and wants. That's my accountability partner. So every time I don't feel like working or I'm stuffing off, you know, that's usually my motivation to get going. But I will tell you this, as someone that's managed salespeople for a long, long time, if you need a day off, take a day off. If you're burnt out, go home. You're not doing yourself any good, take the day off. Come back, recharge tomorrow. I'm doing that today when we get out of here. And I'll tell you guys why, so, and she knows the story. My wife has a serious heart condition. She's gonna need open heart surgery. So for the past two months after she had her last bout with heart failure, we've been at the Mayo Hospital at least twice a week for the past two months. And I sent her to Chicago this week to go see her mom and her sister and all that. And it's like, I don't, I don't have any doctor's appointments. I don't have any, I got work stuff, but I don't have, I don't have to be at that. And it's, somebody told me, you're, got, you're mentally shot. You're just, because I'm tired. It's like your body's telling you to just shut it down. Because I don't, I'm not geared up because when I go to see this doctor, I got to ask him about this and what's this valve thing. I mean, it's you all, you're all geared up, right? So today I'm going home. Might be a bottle of Jameson and Bob, but I'm out of here. <laughs> okay? Okay. Establish your goals, short term and long term. Okay. Short term. Um, what what did you do today to further your business? What did you do this week and what are you doing this month? So so where's it start? Anyway. Here we go. Today. Today. You gotta do something today. Okay? And if you don't do something today, that's okay. Do it tomorrow. And if you don't do it tomorrow, that's okay. Do it the next day. But have a plan. Say, you know, so every week, you know, like I'll tell myself, I want two more listings by the end of the week. And then I'll figure out how am I going to do that? How am I going to get two more listings this week? And I've got systems and plans in place to do that. If you don't have system and plans, then come up with an idea on how you're going to go to list it. So what's the easiest way? Go knock on somebody's door and say, hey, you want to buy, want to sell your house? What if they say yes? What's the chances we're going to say no? 90%? 99%? But what if they say yes? You just happen to be in the right place at the right time. I can show you how to circumvent those odds. But that's what I'm talking about, about short-term goals. And then long-term goals, I think it's going to be really hard to have long-term goals right now. And let me tell you why. I think everybody in this room, and this is this is just my opinion, and it's not political. I think our country and, and our, our market, we're three years past the curve. We should already have a downturn. Probably two years ago, maybe even three. Okay, so it's coming. Here's the good news, and this is how I explain it to my clients. 2006, we were like this. I bought a house for $200,000. It was worth $600,000 in 2006. And then by the time 2008 came around, where, where, where were we at? We were like this. So what went up this way came down this way. The good news is after the crash, we got smart. We had nice, even, steady, three to five percent growth, valley-wide, right? Some places saw seven, you know, Silverleaf, Arcadia, um, you know, some of, some of the more affluent areas saw a little higher. But on average, we saw three to five percent growth. Well, when that turns, that's exactly the loss we're going to get. So if you're being honest with your clients and they're looking to buy a house right now and they're saying, "Well, what do you think the market's going to be?" I tell them the truth. I said, "We're late for a, a correction. If you're looking to move this house a year from now, I don't know if that's a good idea, unless we can buy it right." I tell them that straight out. If your five-year plan, if you got a five-year plan, you won't get hurt. 
I don't believe they're different. That's my opinion. And that's the opinion that I have based on people that are much smarter than me giving me their opinion. But that's my opinion, and I'm honest with my clients. I tell them that. Okay? You'll gain, you'll gain more by doing that than you'll lose. Okay? So as far as long-term goals, um, everybody's saying, let me rephrase that. Um, certain news stations are telling you we're going into a recession, and then there's other news stations that are telling you that our economy is strong as ever. Okay? You make your decision, but make an informed decision. Don't do it because somebody on TV told you that we're going to a recession. I don't believe we are. I believe we're going to have a downturn, absolutely, but I don't believe we're going into a recession. I really don't. If we do, better be prepared. So I always prepare for the worst, me personally. Stock it away right out the wave because it always changes. All right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Don't bullshit yourself. So if you're doing any of these things, say, oh, I did what Johnny said and you didn't really do it. You're only bullshitting yourself. So go and do it. And then once you do, once you do something to change the way you're thinking, then go do another one. Is that changing now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Does everybody understand all that stuff? Yep. I'm going to get on to some stuff that's more fun than this, okay? Uh, my accountability partner is my wife. You guys figure out who that is for you guys. Okay. All right. How many people here have a name tag? Yes? Nobody else? Okay. I have a name tag. When I'm not in this building, I wear my name tag. If I go to the grocery store, I wear my name tag. If I go to Home Depot, I wear my name tag. Why do I do that? Because I want people to recognize me because I need attention. Nobody knows I'm a realtor unless I tell them. So if you want people to ask you a real estate question, they're probably going to need to know that you're a realtor to ask a question. So how many people out there do you think are looking for free advice? Everybody, right? Right? Um, let's say you're specialized in gardening. Just thought, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant some tomato plants. What's the best thing? There? What's the best time to plant tomato plants? So there, there's free advice I'm getting, right, from somebody that knows what they're doing. Okay, same thing with real estate. If they want to open up a quest, open up a, the conversation about real estate, and you're knowledgeable. Remember, we talked about being knowledgeable. Don't you want them to ask you a question instead of you going up to people and go, "Hi, I was just wondering, did you have any questions about real estate?" Probably not. Get away from me, you weirdo. <laughs> right? Wear a name tag. They're seven bucks or eight bucks. Put a magnet on the side of your car. Take it off every night. I'm a realtor. This is my name. This is my phone number. Okay? Then, remember too, that as soon as you put that magnet on your car, or that name tag on your shirt, or you put on a shirt that says my home group, what are you doing? What have you actually done? You just started an interview process. You don't even realize it. You just started an interview process. So if uh, if I'm out and I'm looking for a realtor, I, I don't like blondes. Sorry, I would never use you because I just don't like blondes. Sorry. What's her chances of being, is that blonde? <laughs> is that blonde? <laughs> did, did, did you understand what I'm saying though? I, I don't like black people, I, that's bullshit, but I don't like Mexican people, I don't, whatever, people have, Preconceived things. I'm not doing real estate with her because I don't like girls with blonde hair. I don't trust them. My ex-wife was one, and whatever reason that is. Okay, so you're interviewing all the time. So if somebody's thinking about that guy at the gas station and his wife were just the night before thinking about talking about maybe we should list the house, then he runs into me. What's the chances of that? Okay, what's the chances of him saying anything to me if I didn't have a shirt that he didn't, you know, want to know what it meant? I mean, that was just luck. If he'd have gone two feet over, he'd have seen the thing on the side of my car that says I'm a realtor, okay? Maybe that's their fate. But you're interviewing. The, the minute you get brush your teeth and get out of the house, you're now interviewing for a job. So if you're talking to your buddies, you know, for, for guys, this effing thing and that effing goal was no good and, and this guy hit an effing home run. And if you're talking like that, how many people are you turning off that might want to use you as a realtor? And if that's okay by you, that's okay. That's cool. There's a guy here that runs a team, Josh, Joshua Smith. 
And their motto was get shit done. And they put it on their hats and their shirts. I would never do that. Not in a million years. Works for them. It attracts the people that would wear a shirt that says get shit done. So if you want to attract those like people, that's what you should do. Does that make sense? Yeah, yours says savage on it, so. Yeah, mine says savage. I didn't even know what that meant when I got it, you know. Now I know it's savage. But it didn't say F you or, you know, I mean. It didn't say get shit done. It didn't say get shit done. I would never wear a shirt or a hat that said get shit done. I find it offensive myself. I wouldn't do it. So that's what I'm trying to say. So remember that you're interviewing. As soon as you walk out the front door, you're interviewing for a job. What if you run into somebody at, at the grocery store and they're, they're talking about the guy that's got an ad on the cart, that you've got a cart and he's got a cart or she's got a cart and it's Jimmy Jimmy Johnson's real estate thing. Oh, I heard about that guy. I heard he's horrible. You know, guess what? Yeah, we're looking for a realtor. I wouldn't use that guy. And you're standing in line next to him with your name tag, all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> <laughs> We should get a cake. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Right? <laughs> Big flag. Oh, hey, it's me. Right? Okay, transition. We kind of went through this stuff. Think outside the box. Um, guys, I don't I don't know. I'm not patting myself on the back. But when I'm talking out of the box, I, I get way out of the box. So I have seven billboards in Chicago, I told you. Okay? So those billboards say live the Arizona lifestyle. And as soon as it gets cold in Chicago, they're going to be split screen. One side of the screen is going to have somebody with a snow shovel freezing her ass off, <laughs> and the other side is going to be me like this, with a beautiful sun behind <laughs> me playing golf, and it's going to say, ready to move to Arizona, and I get business from it. But I'm a Chicagoan, so when they call, I talk like this, I, I talk their language, it works for me. Okay, actually, I'm probably going to get 17 more. It's working that well. But there's no reason you can't do it. That's out of the box. Who else is doing that? Find ways to get out of the box, find different ways. I'm gonna show you some other ways that if you got the balls to do it, you'll get business. Okay, okay, again, I'm not getting political, but you wanna talk about out of the box? There's no better example of out of the box than the guy that's currently the president of our country, mm. okay? No, whether love him or hate him, that's out of the box. Nobody expected him to win that election, nobody. All it did is tell us that America was looking for something different. He happened to be the answer at the time. Whether you love him or hate him, and I'm not saying that you have to love him, even though you guys know what side I'm on, that is a perfect example of the ultimate of get out of the box. Here's a guy that doesn't take money from everybody. Anybody? Don't tell me there's a single politician, Democrat or Republican, that ain't taking money from somebody in Washington. They all are. So here's a guy that's different. I don't want your money. I'm going to do this because I want to do this. I'm not promoting him. I'm just telling you how out of the box he is and how different he is. Okay, Washington, you get elected, you go to Washington, you're set for life. You get a pension for life. I mean, that's that's why people want that job. That's why they want to stay there. Okay, he certainly didn't do it for the money. Okay, same thing in real estate. Be that different. Be different. Be knowledgeable. If you really want to be different, go back to that slide that says 95% of the people don't know what they're doing. If you're knowledgeable, you're, you're out of the box already. You're already way out of the box. Talk about fiduciary duty at an open house and see how many people go, what? You know, just be knowledgeable. Okay, I'm gonna whip through some of this. What's your area? This is all basic stuff. Ge geographically, marketing, pilgrim, your, whatever your pillars are. And then here's a really good thing. Um, find out who the best realtor is in your area. Who's, who's kicking your ass and where, where you wanna be? Do you have a certain area you guys work? I work the entire valley. I know okay, where so, my clients want me to go. Okay, so I like to work there right where I live. There's 110 houses where I live in this little subdivision. No HOA, no gates, no nothing. But when a sign goes up in that area, it, it, it burns my ass. Oh, yeah. It's like, why, why mm -hmm. did I get that sign? And then I realized my neighbor used somebody different. I know these people. They're like, Johnny, we were just scared that what if somebody you didn't like came and looked at the house? And now you got to live right across the street from them. I was like, that's a legit that's a legit excuse. I can't, I can't argue that, you know, even though they're probably right. Um, <laughs> but no, really, what if, what, you know, what if, you know, we live in this really nice little neighborhood, what if some, like, some, we don't care some, some family is like, uh, well, we're gonna have about 18 cars in the front yard, and 
engine parts everywhere. You're going to love us. But, Ooh, this house is sold. Look at that. You know, so, so, <laughs> um, so, you know, so look at what the top, well, top realtor in your area that you want to win is doing. Figure out how you can do differently. Oh, come on. This is right when I got this thing all dialed in. Figure out how you can do it differently, how you can do it better, and then what would really piss them off. Okay? Anybody in here know Andrew Bloom? Mm -hmm. I used to work with him. Okay, so, so my personal opinion is if Andrew Bloom was in fire, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> spit on him to help put it out. <laughs> and I'll tell him that right to his face. I think he's the biggest piece of garbage in our business. And I have, I have very good reason for that. He's totally screwed me over a couple times. Okay? So if I get a chance to piss him off, I'm doing it. Part of that is because I'm such a professional. And the other part of that is I'm a vindictive son of a bitch. On the south side. Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, you mess with the wrong guy. Okay? So don't let that be a deterrent. I can't right. imagine why people don't want to work with you. Can you imagine? <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna come and cover everything, everybody has stuff. Okay, so everybody in this room, I did this thing, I had 100 salespeople working.